Good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday morning, so I'm here at the Urban Garden Center in Pearl City. And a few of you have told me you enjoy seeing what's going on. It's something different. So, um, as you know, this is what is really considered remote gardening. So, remote gardening is when you basically um, aren't there to see what's happening um, all the time. Um, surprisingly, a lot of farms here in Hawaii are remote gardening. You don't you don't live there and you may go um, every couple of days but anyways we come here once a week so once a week to show up it's always curious to see what made it and what didn't and what has happened and so I wanted to share just a few things nothing you know earth-shattering but um, anyway some tips so I planted this last week um, it's a it's a type of lima bean. It's very good um, for here in Hawaii. I hope it gets bigger and I can talk more about it later. It's a Christmas lima bean. And I try to promote it to as many people as possible for a number of reasons. But anyway, when I planted it, uh, we have a lot of slugs and snails here, although you would think there wouldn't be because it's so dry and hot. But they, they bury themselves down in the soil and they come up when you're not around. So I made this collar from a nice, this is the cup from coffee and it's nice and sturdy. So when it gets wet repeatedly from the sprinkler system, it won't quickly decompose. It's also not plastic, which will um, become brittle and crack. And then you have these little bits of cracked plastic. And uh, so anyway, it just provides a nice collar around the base. Will it absolutely prevent snails and slugs? No. Will it make it not as easy? Yes. So this guy has made it. He's coming up. Um, that one's doing pretty good. But I can also see leaf miner. You see it in there. Hey, I'm doing a live. People like to see what's going on in the garden. So here's one of my master gardener helpers in the garden. <laughs> We can we only know each other by the outline because we can't see each other anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm sharing about this um, this lima bean and giving tips about preventing uh, slugs and snails from getting in. These little um, let me see if you can see it. You see that little track light light green little thing on there that's a leaf miner and it's actually in the wall of the of the leaf and you know it's actually imagine the walls the top of the leaf and the bottom of the leaf there's space in there with the little square cells if you remember from plant biology and the leaf miner goes in between the, these two spaces and and eats and so that's how you get that it's like a little racetrack looking thing so um so anyway i like to see what's still living i've got my cuban oregano still living this pepper plant um this tomato is doing well and supported but it's um it's a cherry plant so we want something that's successful um, what else? I have a nice, um, what is that? That's a sweet potato. So he's doing well and I've left him all by himself in this whole bed. The whole bed is about, I think it's about seven or eight feet long and he will eventually fill up this whole bed. So that's another thing too. Certain plants, don't just cram them all in there. Um, be patient and let them fill up the space. So over here, the squash is looking horrible. It's still living, but every week that I come, it looks more and more horrible. However, I overseeded with some Cosmos and they are popping up nicely. So not a Cosmos, but this is, and they will get quite large. Um, when you get these guys growing, they're often because you put, um, chopped wood and different things and they're good let them do their thing and add more nutrients and different things into the soil um, 
So I've got more flowers and they will eventually, you see those tall pink, so hopefully they'll get nice and tall as them next, next couple of months. So sometimes, you know, you come and it's still alive, but I think I'm going to commit to pulling those out. They are never going to make it. Um, and our corn, so I wanted to show you the corn. We've got two beds of corn here. They were planted at the same time. They're the same corn, but they were treated differently. So <clears throat> you can see this corn has silk on it and actually um, from last week to this week, um, it's looking really good. It's coming along and you have the tassels at the top. So um, I don't know if somebody peeled this open. I don't know what's happening there. But look at the base. You see how it's all trimmed up like a single stalk? That was hand trimmed um, to remove. And this one was hand was trimmed last week, but by, by then it was too late. There were a lot of, um, like this one, you see there were a lot of suckers coming out. You see how this is too, and there was a central stalk. So uh, that one has it too. You can see all the little stalks coming out from the bottom. So we were told by, um, one of the ag techs who works more with go farm that with this corn when you have all those suckers coming out from the side um although it may look like you're going to get more corn your corn is not going to do well and what happens is it keeps the corn really low to the ground and you see those shot up much taller they're uh, they're about two to three feet taller and then it got silk and you're going to get corn and this one doesn't too so another thing here too i wanted to point out do you see these leaves they're all wrinkly um and there's you can look at it and you see there's no sign of bugs or things eating it but the leaves are really wrinkly and again we were told um by one of the ag techs here that that's a sign of calcium deficiency so uh, we are going to, although it's kind of late now, um, that's why it's important to test your soil before putting crops in. Um, but it's also good to know what the deficiency looks like after your plants come out. So some plants need more of a nutrient. You may have grown something else and didn't see any problem. And then when you plant something that needs more calcium, you'll get... Um, a distortion in the growth or what have you um, in the in the fruit and wonder how come that plant is not growing well it's because it needs a different it needs different nutrients to be successful so we're going to be adding um, some bone meal it's a white powder um, do wear a mask when applying it because it's a very fine powder and it is basically ground up bones um, and you want to work it into the soil a couple inches and, or water it in and work it in. If you leave it on the surface, it'll blow. Also, you may attract critters to the smell. So you might get cats, rats, etc. coming to the smell of those crushed bones. So calcium deficiency, we're going to, um, we're going to add some, uh, bone meal and then while we're at it we'll probably add it to a number of other beds because we haven't amended so we've got some peppers here um, some are older than others so this one on the left um, they weren't looking very well last week so what we, what we did was trimmed off all the rough looking ones to give the energy to go back just to certain branches and help it come along and so this one is coming back he's looking really well and he actually has a pepper so don't be afraid to trim it back hard to get just the good stuff then over here we have something you may not be familiar with how it grows but this is jicama and uh, they are doing really well they've done well from seedlings we haven't had any critters eat them there's no no bugs coming over here so 
we shall see and if this one doesn't have a lot of bug and doesn't attract a lot of disease then that will be a good plant and we'll see how big and vigorous which is very similar to the Christmas lima bean um, it has nice big leaves it grows very vigorously and it's really not a target for pests and disease so um, a great addition to your garden for easy care um, that you get an edible result so uh, anyways that's us here at the urban garden center and um, we haven't started work yet but we've got to get cracking because it's hot already and we've got a lot of work to do and uh, I just thought you would enjoy a little garden tour this morning if you have any questions please let me know I'll be happy to answer bye